Watch Mojo. You're on WatchMojo.com. You'll notice there's advertising all around you. Click on it, please, and help support our sponsors. It may be surprising, but this comedian wasn't always the stud you know today. I just died in your arms tonight. <laughs> Hi, I'm Veronica with WatchMojo.com, and today we're chatting with Ryan Belleville. Hello, Veronica. So you began on the stage of the Loose Moose Theater. What was it that at such a young age you were attracted to stand-up comedy? I gravitated towards it. I, I noticed that I had uh, a natural ability, but, but more so uh, it was something I wanted to be good at. It's kind of like a little comedy communist commune group uh, because you don't pay any money to take classes you can just show up and then uh, as long as you pop popcorn or rip tickets you can get free classes and, and possibly be part of the show so I'm like yeah I want to be part of that I was kind of geeky and I had like a little mullet and I wasn't the coolest kid I know it's shocking um, as we pointed out I am a sexual panther now sweet sexual panther how has your act evolved as you've matured? I'm 30 now, which I don't know if that's good for my career or bad for my career to say that because I got this nice youthful look. Although I've learned at 30 there's a very fine line between cute little hobbit and like fat alcoholic goblin. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm, I'm brushing up against that. It's weird saying that your comedy matures because comedy is inherently immature. <laughs> Hello, I have a mustache. But the... <laughs> The big thing is that, that your topics change because life changes a little bit. Uh, um, when you're talking to college kids, they're, they're not necessarily interested in, in money or finances. It's like when you're 30, you're probably more concerned about credit card debt or mortgages. Now, as we kind of saw already in this interview, you have a tendency to go off topic and you also do that on stage sometimes. So does that mean that every show is going to be a little bit different? I also like boats. <laughs> this is my, I have this on my arm. It says, don't be prepared. And it's just a, it's a tribute to where I started from in improvisation, but a reminder to be spontaneous. And uh, it, if you're walking to any situation with a specific idea of how you think the situation's gonna go, you close yourself off to all the other things that could happen. Now, I find that people who work off the cuff are the best working with the audience. How do you deal with hecklers, or what's your best experience or worst experience? It's weird. If, if you're very interactive, the crowd wants to, to talk to you sometimes, and generally I don't mind that, uh, as long as people respect the fact that we're here to perform, and we have a show, and, and maybe we actually have a point to what we're, we're trying to say, like we're, we're trying to get somewhere. And I'm always amazed, too, that people want to egg on a comedian because we make our living with our mouths and through verbal acuity. And it's kind of like going up to Chuck Liddell and going, Hey, what's, you want to fight, huh? Like, why would you do that? He's gonna headbutt you to death. He's a ninja. You played a dog who turns into a human. Did you have to research that role? They were nice enough to, to pay for me to bring my dog with me to Regina for the summer. Jealous. It's amazing how in the mind frame you can get when you're mostly naked, uh, wearing a dog collar and walking around and drinking, drinking out of a toilet. You're like, I, I think this is, I'm in, I'm in the zone. That was my Citizen Kane, right there. When I was drinking out of a toilet, I'm like, mm, you've made it, Ryan. Mm, mm, yeah, mm, next stop, Broadway. Well, thank you very much, it was great having you here. Oh, it was my pleasure, and, uh, uh, and thank you for, for taking some time out of your day surfing uh, to watch um, Mojo.